Did you know? Contrary to popular belief, Silent Hill 4 didn't start out as an independent horror title that adopted the Silent Hill moniker to boost sales. Under the development name Room 302, the game was produced by a few members of Team Silent directly after Silent Hill 2 was completed and alongside Silent Hill 3. This was done so that the team could research new ideas and prevent the franchise from becoming stale while a more traditional sequel was developed alongside it. Producer Akira Yamaoka stated that the intention was to aim for a different theme for the Silent Hill series and to take a step forward into a new season or phase. He went on to say that the idea was to deal with the room as the central theme and question what happens if you're struck with fear in a familiar setting that is usually safe. Silent Hill Origins, a prequel title that released for the PlayStation 2 and PSP, originally started as a full-on remake of the very first Silent Hill game. While initially being planned by an unnamed Los Angeles developer, it eventually found its way to British studio Climax. Climax was tasked with salvaging the project, as the game hit several snags during production. It was decided to make Origins a prequel, as there were problems making the controls and camera systems work with the PSP's limited control inputs. Climax finished the game in a mere 12 months. That was fairly impressive when you consider that Climax threw away almost everything that the unnamed LA developer gave them. The only content which survived was The Butcher, and that was mainly due to Konami liking the character. Climax wasn't completely done with the franchise, however, as they were also responsible for 2009's Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Interestingly, the game's creation happened in direct contrast to Origins. Shattered Memories was intended to be a brand new chapter of the Silent Hill mythos, but then became a reimagining of the original Silent Hill. In the pre-production phase, the game carried the subtitle of Cold Heart, which alludes to the usage of ice and snow, rather than the rust and decay of previous entries in the series. The unused story followed a new female lead named Jessica Chambers, who is an overworked and emotionally fragile college student. While many of the original core gameplay mechanics carried over into Shattered Memories, Cold Heart's initial pitch featured survival mechanics where Jessica had to prevent her own frigid death by wearing warm clothing and seeking shelter indoors. The original pitch documents also indicated that improvised melee weapons, finishing moves, and dodges were considered early on in development. It's speculated that the lukewarm response fans had to the advanced combat mechanics of Homecoming just a year earlier led to this removal. That said, it's never been implicit stated by Climax or Konami why these cuts were made or how Cold Heart was turned into a reimagining of the first game. The release of Silent Hill Origins also marked a stark turning point for the franchise, as Silent Hill 5 was also in development for the PS3 and Xbox 360. Internal struggles between Konami and Team Silent arose around this time. In a 2006 interview, Akira Yamaoka stated that the team experimented with the idea of fear in daylight, and that they hoped to return to a more psychological approach employed by Silent Hill 2. However, none of these ideas came to fruition, and Silent Hill 5 emerged as Silent Hill Homecoming. Homecoming was ultimately developed by The Collective, a developer whose previous games included Buffy the Vampire Slayer and The Da Vinci Code. Matters got complicated partway through development as The Collective merged with Backbone Entertainment and later the remnants of Shiny Interactive, forming a new team called Double Helix Games. The fractured development cycle resulted in a rushed and buggy product that placed a heavy emphasis on combat, which seemed like an odd choice given the series' roots. Konami was also pitched two different versions of a Silent Hill game for the Nintendo DS and turned both of them down. The co-founder of Renegade Kid, Jules Watchem, recalls, They were kind enough to meet with us, but the meeting only lasted a few minutes and ended with their representative saying they wouldn't let a team like us handle the Silent Hill license. Their horror pitch would later be released as Dementium the Ward for the Nintendo DS. Dementium went on to receive positive reviews and proved that horror games could be surprisingly effective on the handheld. Several years later, and with a proven track record of portable titles, Renegade Kid approached Konami once more with a third-person demo running on the improved Dementium 2 engine, and were simply told once again by Konami that they had no interest in releasing Silent Hill on the system. By this point, Team Silent had long been dissolved, and most key developers responsible for Silent Hill had left Konami. Team Silent weren't the only aspect of Silent Hill to be mismanaged. Konami also lost the actual game assets for the earlier titles. This caused problems during the development of Silent Hill HD Collection. Producer Tom Hewlett told 1UP.com, We got all the source code that Konami had on file, which it turns out wasn't the final release version of the games. So during debug, we didn't just have to deal with the expected porting bugs, but also had to squash some bugs that the original team obviously 
previously removed prior to release, but we'd never seen before. We certainly had our hands full. I think at one point, Heather, the protagonist of Silent Hill 3, was blue. The port was largely slammed by fans and critics for its constant bugs and technical inconsistencies. The PS3 version was patched to alleviate some of the bugs, but the patch for the Xbox 360 version was completely cancelled due to technical issues and resources. The last couple of years have been tumultuous for Silent Hill, as the last officially released game for the franchise, Silent Hill Book of Memories, was a critically panned, multiplayer-focused dungeon crawler exclusively for the PlayStation Vita. Konami was then all set to reboot the franchise, beginning with the interactive horror teaser PT, which was a cleverly disguised demo for a future title simply called Silent Hills. The teaser was well received, and it seemed even more promising when it was announced that Hideo Kojima Guillermo del Toro and the Walking Dead star Norman Reedus would be heavily involved with the project. The situation soon turned sour, however. Kojima and his staff were let go after Konami had suddenly decided to start restructuring their business. Guillermo del Toro then explained to San Francisco Film Society attendees that Silent Hills had been cancelled. The very next day, Konami announced that PT would then be pulled from the PlayStation Store and then issued an official statement confirming the cancellation of Silent Hills. All hope is not lost, however, as the same press release stated that despite the cancellation, the Silent Hill franchise would continue. Konami stuck to their word, and in August of 2015, unveiled the official Silent Hill Pachinko Machine. Don't forget to subscribe for more facts and trivia. Before you go, we'd like you to vote on what you want to see covered in the future. You can also vote by leaving a comment below. Hey, want more Silent Hill stuff? Then move your eyeballs and your earballs over to our channel, Super Best Friends Play, to check out our annual Scariness Marathon! 31 days, 31 spooky games. You'll see ghosts, demons, tentacles, and of course, our bony overlords, the skeletons. <laughs>